Hey everybody, this is Flight of Stars coming to you from the JCraft server. I'm actually in front of my base as it currently stands. And I thought it might be fun to sort of give you all a tour because this area is about ready to get a big upgrade and I thought it might people might find it interesting, you know, the process of seeing that change. So let me let me give you an idea of what this place is like and then I'll show you the area as I hope it to become in creative mode. So this is my base. It is actually got s some landscaping already done here in the front. Not very much, but some. Um, just as I was trying to tidy the area up and get it to kind of integrate a little bit more into the landscape, you can see that the front actually looks fairly typical. It's a, it's a facade, essentially, though, because actually this build is a little bit more like a dollhouse. Um, the other side is, <laughs> you see, completely open to the elements. So let me come over here and you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly what it looks like. So you can see it's, it's, it's open to the elements here. And I'm trying to try to get a better view. Yeah, so you can see here, here's what it looks like. It has sort of this glass roof that prevents mob spawns from happening when you're inside of it as far as phantoms go and things like that. And it allows me to completely light up the inside while having kind of a barrier on the outside that mobs are not able to penetrate. So it's perfectly safe, even though it's completely open. Um, but it allows it's just sort of for this, this cool look on the interior. So those of us who like you know, little details, especially on the interior, this sort of gives you a way to show them off without people having to actually come into your house, and you can sort of take it in all at one go. And it actually is special in another couple of ways, too, because not only is this this one side the dollhouse style, but this other side, this back side, I'll try to get a good view for us here, um, this is also a completely different view. This side right here, is a redstone uh, side of the house. So you can see there's a villager center up there at the top where there you can see the, the little uh, zombie. His name is Danger Noodle, I believe. And then you can see that there is a teeny tiny breeder in case I need more villagers or I want to switch out some of the villagers that I currently have, which I have done a couple of times. Then we have a teeny tiny wheat farm um, because I sell... In uh, inside of the uh, shopping district, I actually have a nursery where I sell plants of all kinds, including hay bales. And so that's sort of like a steady trickle of, of wheat that I constantly have as needed. And that's really helpful for me. And then down here, we have enough sugar cane to supply all my rocket needs, some bamboo so that I can sell that and also have access to the new bamboo blocks. You can see it just went off there. And then a teeny tiny cactus farm because I also do sell cactus and I do a lot with dyeing material as well. You can kind of see in the back if you look really closely. I'll show you another time. But there's also a teeny tiny gold farm back there that's based off my nether portal as piglin come in through the nether portal. They will be attracted by an egg and, and actually produce teensy tiny amounts of uh, gold. And then there's also a microscopic wool for farm and a trash can back there as well. And so it's just kind of fun that you can be able to see all the elements just by coming over and taking a look at them. I think that's that's kind of neat. Now the front actually isn't more than just a facade, although it was mostly just to show off some building. But these buildings do have purposes, at least a couple of them do. That one is a teeny tiny arboretum. It's got all the plants in it growing and I, so I have access to things like glowberries and um, the two tall plants and stuff like that. And then this building over here is actually a um, potion brewing area. So you can see in here, little itty bitty potion brewing, mostly for water breathing because I supply a lot of sponges for the server and things like that. And so I'm always making water breathing. You can see here's the portal and behind it um, is the gold farm. Just still got a little bit of Thanksgiving decor. Leading up here, it's my front door bedroom with a little uh, little frog section right here because I sell pets in the pet store, and so that's kind of a sample. There is the location of the trading center. 
And then if we go down the steps in the other direction, you will see, this is me, sorta, you will see I have a little furnace array right here. It has to be very carefully done, this lava, because this actually, we, we do have fire spread on this server, and so if it's not very carefully contained, then unfortunately you will end up with fire. So this is very carefully contained and there is no danger. Just some stuff for pretty here, basic storage because this is of course um, a server and so for me I just didn't feel any need to have a major storage area like I do on my single player servers where I'm dealing with mass and massive amounts of materials instead I deal with that with storage boxes uh, in the form of shulkers. You know if I have mass quantities of materials, I just shove them into shulkers and then put them into the right area instead. And that seems to serve me well. Little treasure area where I keep the expensive stuff. And then down here is actually all of my um, basic farms. So this is more or less just a catch-all. I trade out these farms according to what I need. Right now you can see I was working on brown dye and some mangrove materials. This is all piping to different uh, farms down below. And these are the major materials I wanted just sort of a trickle of access to. Um, kind of preparing for 1.21 over here. And if you go down, you'll see that each level has one or perhaps two farms. So this is my iron farm and um, wart, nether wart, mostly because I sell nether wart and I also sell nether bricks in uh, my dimension shop. Down here, this is actually a snowball powered uh, creeper farm. And it produces quite a significant amount of gunpowder, considering that this is really should be up in the air. I was just hoping that I would be at distance from it enough of the time that it would produce what I need for just rockets. And it, it absolutely does, even underground. And then this is a, a squid farm. And it only works at a certain distance, but I manage to hit that distance pretty often. Plus, I also have a cloud above my base that I can go and stand on that's the precise exact amount. There is another floor down here that is a trident farm. It doesn't work very well yet. I need to make some modifications to it. Uh, I actually sort of created an accidental nautilus farm when I was doing the squid farm because I had put an iron... Um, th this is a dripstone cave biome, if you go further enough down, um, and I was accidentally producing drown that would have nautilus shells, and when I had it, the killing, you know, my glow squid before they were able to actually make their drops, that was a problem, so I put an iron golem inside of the original design I had for the glow squid farm before it was columns of water. And it was killing, it was killing the drown, and apparently that counts for loot drop. So I was getting nautilus shells. Now I had to modify that because it wasn't efficient as a glow glow squid farm, which is what I actually needed most. But I kind of regret changing it in some ways because getting, you know, if you've ever hunted for nautilus shells on purpose, you know that they're not particularly easy to get. And I think I got enough for an entire. Uh, conduit before I ended up changing the design of that farm. So I created a different version. It didn't work out perfectly, so I think I might just modify that. So you can see here on the side, oh, I'll show you this actually before I show you kind of the thing I'm, I'm hoping to modify and upgrade really soon. But I have this bridge stretching across, and in order to kind of make that a little bit more accessible, I did create this kind of tunnel. I think it's pretty. I think it, I think it does the job. And it leads over here to the bridge. Uh, yeah, there's my goodest boy. He's mostly there to prevent, you know, running into skeletons accidentally. It's pretty well lit, lit up, though. I don't think that's the pro that's going to be really a problem. So let's talk about the major upgrade because I want to show you that in a minute. So this is the view from my house. Actually, the best view from my house. The house is view as it is intended, and the whole reason I chose to build here was because it has this fabulous, glorious view out across the way at this village. And the village, as you can see, kind of got built up this side of the cliff. It's got this massive waterfall. It had this church sitting right on the top. And then it has sort of this sprawling area all over here. And I just thought to myself, this is, a, this is an opportunity. I want to make this a beautiful sight to behold. Maybe put some utility in it. Like I do have currently this sort of very straight looking staircase. Oh, it looks terrible. That leads up to my early game XP farm that I still use quite a lot as an enchanting array. 
Um, but there's just, there's just opportunity here to see this. So take a good look at it because you're about ready to see this scene transform in my creative world into exactly what I'm hoping to build. Ta-da! So you can see, <laughs> this is the upgrade. This is what I'm hoping to build in this area in the days to come. I almost always design things in creative world first, and then I use Lightmatica to allow me to rebuild it. Lightmatica, guys, is a godsend to creative detail workers because it takes so much trial and error to create something like this. And for the longest time, I was like taking screenshots and then trying to recreate screenshots in a regular survival world. And it was so painful. And you always felt like you missed out on details. So you try to skip that stage and just build in the survival world to begin with. But the thing is, you just can't get this level of detail in a survival world easily. It's just, it's too easy to neglect the teeny tiny experimental things because every block you place is a block you then have to destroy if you don't like its placement. So you can see I chose red as kind of a color that I used for the village in part because it makes my base seem less like it's just sort of floating in the middle of a landscape that it's not connected to and it's more integrated with the environment as a whole. And there were a couple things in particular that I was aiming for. One of them is I wanted to maintain kind of having a piece here on the precipice. Uh, I didn't want it to be a church though, and so I think this lighthouse turned out really nice. I really enjoy the way that looks. And the other piece that I really wanted to create was a facade that would hide the smelting array. So behind that is gonna be a large smelting array because I do not currently have a mass smelting array, and this will just be the way that I enter it to make it look much nicer. It's going to be part of this village. I also try to maintain as much as I could the levels. There's so many levels that this little village was sort of naturally built into, and so when I started modifying it, I tried very hard to add staircases and pathing that maintained that kind of sense of multiple levels of building. I really dislike flat builds and I, I, I did not want to create it. Like this area right here is already too flat for me, but if I do a whole lot to it, I'll sacrifice kind of the below the water leveling, which I really like. So I didn't want to mess with it too much. Over here you can see there's sort of a fishing array. Um, I saw this somewhere something very similar to this, and I thought, yes, that's gorgeous. I want to recreate something like that. And so, of course, it's suited to the environment that I have. It's had some changes made to it, but I I just, I just love the way that it turned out. And you can kind of see that there's netting down below as though this would be a fish farm. I haven't actually put any fish in it, but you can see how that that's going to look eventually. There are a couple of details I want to show you in more detail. Or, <laughs> yes, of course. The first one is I do have a little cemetery and um, Witch's Cottage. It, this sort of was a happy accident. I had one of my villagers who originally lived in that village up there hit by lightning and transformed into a witch. And I have been saving her. I've been allowing her to live in the cabin rent-free and waiting for the day when I could finally bring her over, her over here and put her in her own little, her own little hermit's you know, area. And so I'm, I'm very excited to, to do that with, I, I do mob handling already in the pet store. And so I, I am very experienced with moving various hostile mobs and I'm not really worried about moving a witch. So over here, whoopsie, you can see that I kind of have this teeny tiny, mostly for show sugarcane farm. It's not functional, of course, it's just meant to make make for detail and storytelling and also because like it makes little details like this make more sense of it you can kind of get an idea of where the villagers would have gotten those things and this area is mostly finished as far as detail is concerned you can see it's just this nice little farm there is a well over here uh, with a pulley system so they can pull water up out of the well inside of it it's teensy tiny but i think really cute um, and back here is an animal pen it has sheep in it currently. I was just basically testing that my walls were sufficient, and they are. Hooray! Uh, I do have some... Oh, that's right. So let me actually show you. I have a little apple orchard right here. 
some glow berries, and this is a custom tree. I have kind of a little library of custom trees I have been working on, and I often start with a base like this and just modify it from the environment. So this is one of my favorite custom trees. You can see that it's got some shading and stuff like that in it. And there's another custom tree over here that I think it looks, I think they look so nice together in this area. This is a massive boy that I built actually for the shopping district in Jcraft. But I actually think it looks nicer here, mostly because <laughs> our shopping district is in a mushroom island, which is great. Like, it, it's very convenient. But uh, I really do not like it when biomes change the color of oak leaves. And they look very vibrantly green in a mushroom island, which is not great for shadowing because there's not enough contrast between them and other varieties of leaves, which is very frustrating. Then we have what is actually my mine entrance, or shortly will be. I'm ready to move that from a different location to here. And then this just leads up into a little tiny area that is some hot springs. So just for pretty. This is actually not a custom tree. It's a vanilla tree that has been customized. Just chop off the edges so that it no longer looks so square. Add some um, variety so that the bottom is darkest and the top is lightest. This is actually oak leaves because cherry blossom groves are one of the annoying biomes that changes the color of oak leaves. In this case, they look more like azalea leaves, so I didn't even have to put azalea leaves on the top of this one. But it also means that I can really only achieve two tones without using spruce leaves, which I did not want to do because unless you're building certain very specific types of trees, like a literal pine tree, the spruce leaves can look kind of funny, and, and I didn't want to. Back over here, I've got a custom tree kind of built out of the rock, and it's next to this diagonal bridge, which I think is going to look really nice. This area down here is not very modified yet, though. It will be soon. And then um, over here, you can see that this is going to be the new area that leads up to the XP farm. These buildings are mostly vanilla. They've just been modified. So you can see they're definitely different. They match the color of my base a little bit better, but they're not significantly different. And then there's a couple other little areas. Oh, this, this particular build is so ugly. I'm still working on it. I love it from the side. Looks like a little area over there. Look at it from the side. See? Quite cute. But from the front, dreadful. I'll, I'll figure it out, though. Up here, though, this is going to be a koi pond. It doesn't have the fish in it yet. I've got tropical fish, specifically clownfish, that I'm going to put in to mimic the koi. But look how adorable. Love it. Love it. It's going to be so nice to come up. Now, this is a great example of this is actually not a custom tree. This is a tall oak tree that, that I modified by adding more leaves, a little bit more branches. But... You know, the thing about trees, custom trees, is that they're an absolute pain to build. They're, they're, they're gorgeous, they're worth it, but if you can modify an existing vanilla tree, as you can see I kind of have done all over the place, then it's a lot better. And a lot of times you can get more variety too, because there's sort of a natural variation to the way that they grow in vanilla, and all it takes is some, some perking up, you know? So one last thing I want to show you, and then we're going to kind of be done is this little build up here. This is kind of a stable. Um, I think it turned out nice. I think it I think it did. I really didn't want a big build up here to compete with this because it messes with the scaling. You know the the lighthouse would obviously look bigger if this was not here, but it just turned out so nice. I was just gonna build it up here and then move it somewhere else, but no. I I think I'm gonna keep it up here. I think it looks nice. So that's it. This is uh this is what I'm planning on for an upgrade. It is going to take an absolute ton of time to build, but I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to it so much because the resource management is my favorite part of Minecraft. I love collecting the items that you need to build something, and I love building redstone farms in order to help gather those materials. I really do, but I... I cannot create something like this in survival mode first. I, I really have to design it first in creative mode and then build it somewhere else. And blessings to Lightmatica for allowing us to do this. So what do you think? I hope that you'll tell me in the comments if you think that some of these designs are any good. And I'll be curious if you have any recommendations about teeny tiny details 
that you would include if you were going to be building a village of this kind. So I guess that's it. I will see you later. Bye.